In this lesson, we're going to look at one specific example of a programming environment for dealing with big data applications running on large computational clusters. And this programming environment is called MapReduce Programming Environment. And in this programming environment, the input to the application is considered as a set of records identified by a key value pair. So the big data app developer supplies the runtime environment with two functions called map and reduce. And these are the only two functions that the app developer has to supply to the programming environment. And both map and reduce take user-defined key value pairs as inputs and produce user-defined key value pairs as output. So both the input and the output to each of these map and reduce functions written by the domain expert are key value pairs. Once again, these are key value pairs defined by the app developer specific to the particular application that he or she is coding. Let's consider a fun example. In this example, I'm going to say that we are looking to find specific names of individuals in a corpus of documents. Maybe the names are Kishore, Arun, Drew, and so on. These are the specific names that I want to find in a whole corpus of documents. So the input to the application is a whole corpus of documents, and we are looking for specific names, and the number of times those names occur in those documents. So that's what this application is going to do. So the input key space for the application is the file name. And the value part of the key value pair is the content of the file. So if you have n files in the corpus of documents that we want to analyze in this fashion, then you have n key value pairs corresponding to each of the different files and the respective contents. So this is going to be the input to the whole application. And we are going to structure this application using this programming paradigm of MapReduce. And we will see how the app developer will use the MapReduce framework to accomplish the goal that we set out, which is to find the number of occurrences of unique names in this corpus of documents. In this example, the user-defined map function is looking for each of the unique names that we are interested in the corpus of documents. So the map function will take as an input a specific file and the contents of the file as the key value pair and emit a value that corresponds to the number of times each one of these names occur in the input file. Now, a simple version of the map function may emit a one every time it encounters the name Kishore in the input file or the name Arun in the input file, or the name Drew in the input file. The output of the map function is a key value pair, where the key is the unique name that we're looking for, one of the unique names that we're looking for. And the value is the number that says how many times it found that particular name. As I said earlier, a simple version of the map function could emit a value of one every time it finds one of the specified names that it is looking for in the file, or a slightly more elaborate mapper may actually combine the number of occurrences of a particular name in the input file and then emit that as a sum of all the times a particular name occurred in this key value pair. In either case, the output of the map function is itself a key value pair. Note that it is different from the input key value pair. The output key value pair that the mapper is emitting is a unique name and a value that is associated with that unique name. And from this example, it should also be evident that we can spawn as many instances of the map function as the number of unique files that we have in the input document corpus. Further, since each of the map function is working on a different key value pair as an input, they're all independent of one another, and there is no need for coordination among them. And that's the feature of an embarrassingly parallel application. The output of the mappers are the input to the reducers. 
In other words, the output key value pair from the mapper is the same as the input key value pair for each of the reducers that you see here. Again, this reduce function is something that is written by the user. And you notice that what the mapper is doing is when it detects a particular name in this example that it is looking for, like Kishore, then this mapper is going to send the value associated with Kishore to this reducer. Similarly, this mapper is going to send the value corresponding to Kishore to the same reducer. And all the mappers in the same fashion are going to send the respective values that they found for this unique name Kishore to this reducer. Similarly, the values found for the name Arun is going to be sent to this reducer by all the mappers, and so on. So the number of reducers that we will have is the same as the number of unique names that we are looking for in the corpus of documents. This is where work needs to be done by the programming environment to plumb the output of the mappers to the inputs of the reducers. Potentially, the mappers could be executing on different nodes of the cluster. Reducers can be executing on different nodes of the cluster. And the work that is involved in this plumbing is really making sure that the outputs of the mappers are fed to the corresponding correct reducers in the entire distributed system. For example, the output that is coming out of the mapper corresponding to Kishore has to be sent to this reducer from all the mappers. The outputs corresponding to Arun coming from all these mappers have to be sent to this reducer and so on. That's what we mean by the plumbing that needs to be done by the programming environment to facilitate the communication that needs to happen between instances of the mapper and the instances of the reducers. The work performed by each one of these reducers is going to be aggregation of the values that it got for each of the unique names that we're looking for in the input document corpus. So this reduces job is to aggregate all the instances of Kishore that it got from all the mappers. So it is receiving the key value pair corresponding to the name Kishore and the number of instances that they found in the input key value pair that they processed. And the reducer is going to aggregate that and the output of the reducers, all the reducers, is once again going to be a key value pair. It is exactly the same as the input key value pair that the reducers got. Namely, the key is the unique name that they've been assigned to aggregate, and the value is the total number of the occurrence of this unique name in the corpus of documents we started with. So this is the roadmap for creating a map reduce application for a chosen application that works on big data. So in this case, the chosen application was looking for unique names in a corpus of documents. And all that the domain expert had to worry about is deciding what is the format of the key value pair, which is the input to the whole application, in particular, the map phase of the application, and also what is the format of the intermediate key value pair that is going to be generated by the mapper function and what is the work that needs to be done in each of the mapper and the reducer to carry out the work that needs to be done for this particular application. Beyond that, the app developer does not have to worry about any of the other details, such as how many instances of mappers do we need to create? How do we create the number of instances of reducers corresponding to what this application is wanting to do? And also worrying about the plumbing from the output of the mappers to the input of the reducers. All of those are things that the app developer does not have to worry about.